Neils, I now recognize uh, Mr. Correa, the gentleman from uh, California, for uh, his five minutes question. I want to thank our witnesses for being here today. And, and Mr. Chairman, I want to take a moment to also um, thank our circuit service for protecting uh, former President Trump. Uh, I serve on the select committee investigating the assassination attempt. And uh, I can tell you right now that I want to make sure that all candidates running for presidency are well protected. According to the FBI and DHS, the biggest issue right now is domestic terrorism in this country. I have a chart here that shows all of the domestic terrorism attacks in this country today. And for the record, Mr. Chairman, I also have a couple of articles. One, just think today from the LA Times saying, second attempt on pres former President Trump uh, sounds alarm abroad. People around the world are concerned that our American democracy is at a breaking point. And another one here from Political this morning, Russian election interference targeting Harris campaign. So, so ordered. Again, we thank the Secret Service, and I think our priorities has to be protecting our democracy here in this country. Uh, Ms. Ms. Morin, um, thank you for being here. I heard your testimony in Judiciary Committee, and I mentioned to you then, as I will repeat now, that in my district we had a young man, an American citizen, that we caught. His M.O. was raping undocumented women in the local apartment complex. He raped probably 20 women that reported being raped before he was caught. And, you know, I'm about to say something I've never said in public, but my my spouse, my wife, used to be a marathoner. A good five, six years ago, she went out for a jog in the local riverbed. She was attacked by an SOB. I got a phone call about 9.15 in the morning by the local police saying she had been attacked. I don't know how she did it, but she broke loose from his strangle on her, on her neck, before she passed out, just enough to scream for help. Your story is one that has, has should not be forgotten and should be remembered by all of us because when these heinous crimes against women rape, murder, are perpetrated, I don't care which side of the party you're on. I don't care which side of the immigration issue you're on. We have to stop this. With or without documents, these individuals deserve a, place, a special place in hell. So thank you for being here, for sharing your story. Are you, are you asking for a response? No, but you can if you wish. I open um, it up to you. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to say at the last hearing when I shared about my past, it was because I wanted people to understand that I know what it's like to be a victim of a violent crime that survived. And so I understand probably more than anybody in this room some of the things that my daughter endured. I also said in that statement that my grandparents immigrated here from uh, Europe. My husband, his parents immigrated here from Europe. And I don't believe that the American people are against immigration. We're against illegal immigration. People should stay in their own countries, go through the process, and then be allowed into this country the way that my grandparents and my husband's grandparents. And I'm going to put all my notes aside that I wanted to talk about today. I have less than a minute left. But suffice it to say that I'm with you. I hope we can figure out how to address legal immigration to this country. Mr. Desmond, you represent an area in San Diego as a county. I was also county board of supervisor in Orange County. We have a lot of people that have been in this country 20, 30 years and can't find the front door. And we need to come up with a way of processing people to make sure that the MS-13 individuals from El Salvador don't get in. And when they're deported, they go back to jail in El Salvador, not only in the U.S. But that takes work from both sides of the aisle. My opinion, there's basically three buckets of individuals right now. You have the new asylum refugees. You have people that have been here 20, 30 years. Dreamers, people in the military. And then you have people that do 
concern us when it comes to terrorism. But under the existing legal framework, we're not solving any of those problems. Mr. Heitke, I just met with the president of your local Water Patrol Union two hours ago. You know what he told me? He said they don't have, even have enough resources at the Border Patrol to fix their vehicles and they break down. We have a lot of challenges and fighting here is not going to solve them. Mr. Chairman, my time is up, but thank the chair, the, uh, I thank all of you for being here today. Thank you very much. The gentleman yields. I now recognize Mr. Bishop, the gentleman from North Carolina, for his five minutes questioning. Um, Mr. Heike, uh, you've, you're now able to say what you're saying here today 